today we are going to learn about how to create new work orders. When you hear a term work order, MR8 calls them parts, but you might use the term locations, stops, facilities, or custodians. The MRA system will use the parts consistently so you have an order number dash part number but I'm referring to them as most likely as a work orders. There are uh, three concepts that I need to cover today before we get into actual adding work orders. The first one is called ROI handled by. ROI stands for release of information when you ask for records from hospital, it's handled by the department called ROI or by you might have a document that you have to submit. A lot of times it is handled by the facility. For example, let's say uh, there is a location called Dr. Stephen Jacobs. When it comes to medical records, it's handled by the field will be blank, which means that it's handled by the same as a location. So Dr. Stephen Jacobs' office will handle the release of medical records. But when it comes to, for example, billing records, doctor's offices usually outsource them to billing services. So when it comes to billing records, the custodian is Dr. Stephen Jacobs' office, but the ROI handled by will be another company, doctor's billing services. MR8 handles that, and I'll show you in a minute with a real sample in our MR8 database. And then second feature we have in MR8 is called ordered as. When client ordered in her email or fax or on the phone call, the secretary said, we want some records from Thomason Hospital in El Paso. After research, you have found out that it's not called Thomason Hospital anymore. Now it's called University Medical Center of El Paso. So when you are sending a client a confirmation of order listing University Medical Center El Paso, and client might say, we never ordered any records from University Medical Center, then it'll say right below that, ordered as Thomason Hospital, and then the secretary will know what happened. So we keep track of both ordered as and the current location name. The last concept we need to know as we add each work order, the tracking now is built into MR8 and the tracking will automatically start for each work order. You have to set up tracking steps for each item that you want to track, such as records or process serving and so on, before you start adding work orders to the system because it automatically start with the first step so let's go back to our MR8. I'll go to setup. There is a function called tracking steps. Let's say uh, I have a records retrieval company and in my company we basically do two things. We go retrieve records and then on the side as a side business I do process serving and as you know those two have a totally different workflow. I set up different tracking steps for each. So let's look at records which that's what most of you do. So let's go search for it. For example, a farm in Texas. So when we do records, these are the 12 sequences it goes through. Order received, and then I do research, and then it goes into in notice period and out of waiver, and, and so on and so forth. The last step is completed, and then I have a special step waiting for clients. So anytime work order is moving through this assembly line, something might happen such as a fee approval or waiting for a authorization from the patient. You cannot proceed without a client's either approval or action on, on their part. You might go out of sequence and then you might end up in waiting for client. Then when client responds, goes back to one of these others. So as you set up, you can also decide whether that particular step is to be published on MR Web for your clients to see that particular step. Why wouldn't you want a particular step to be published? Well, because as a production, I don't want client to see the work order has been in, sitting in production for days now after records has been received. You know, I'm, I might want to let the client know when records are delivered, when we are contacting custodian, or when we are out of waiver, but I don't want to let them know that records have been received or in production because we are not doing our job. So it's again, it's up to you what steps you like to publish. You have a, uh, a person or persons to be notified when a particular step is completed. 
So these guys will be notified when that particular step is done. The first thing you need to do is set up and think through, find out your workflow that will fit your business model, define them for each item. And uh, anytime you add a work order, that very first step, order received, will be automatically generated. My um, uh, order processing manager will be notified. So let me close that. And let me show you an example of that. So let me go to locations. Let's say I'm looking up uh, Dr. Jacobs. Enter. And then you see there are two entries I made for Dr. Stephen Jacobs. Even though it's exactly the same facility, I had to segregate because if it's a medical records department, ROI handled by in additional tab is blank. There's nothing there. MR8 will assume that ROI handled by is the same as the location. But if we need to get billing records from this facility, it is not this facility, but there is a doctor's billing services I have looked up and specified that facility to be ROI handled by for the billing records. So they are totally two different locations. So now that's the reason I have two separate entries. After I entered medical records for Dr. Stephen Jacobs, I made a copy and then I changed the department and ROI. So let's go back to the case manager here, case manager, Lee versus Big Pharma Inc. This time I'm gonna look for the case name. Again, I'll type a keyword. It can be any part of the case name, Lee, Pharma, Big, Inc. But most likely the big is the unique name. So I go enter. We got two patients enter so far this case and we're going to work on this young list case. I'm going to go highlight that. On the bottom grid, there are no parts entered because we haven't entered any yet. Uh, I got, when I got an email from Marianne, the secretary, she listed basically three locations for us to get records from. So I'm going to simply add one at a time. So let's go to new and we'll look up our location database. So I just go memorial. You can type any part of it. And uh, there are several of them, but I see the one, two, three, four main street. So this is the one. I'm going to select that. And as we select a location, I see the, there is have some warning messages from the location setup. Uh, all the information comes in. The record type, I selected the medical as a to be default. The order date for this particular work order will default to today's date. And this order date is very important. This is what we use to figure out how old the work order is. So let's go to additional and we are subpoenaing for documents. We're going to sort by hand. So these are all drop downs you select. This one we'll use later schedule pickup when we are ready to start calling custodian. We'll use that tab. So let's go to forms because we need to specify the scope, what we are getting from this facility. There are set of scopes that are predefined by you. MRA will you know, provide a bunch of scopes for you. You can, you can modify them, you can add more to it. So let's look up. The system will pull up based on the record type, all the scopes that are predefined in the table. I'll use this one. That's my standard one. I see that this one requires the service date from and service date to. So this one is actually, I know those two dates. So they are looking for medical records from January 1, 2005 to the present. So I'm going to change this to present. So that's my scope. The second thing you need to specify, for example, if you are in, I need to specify what type of interrogatory I need for this particular work order. So I'm going to look it up here and then I select a subgroup, what I'm doing federal, state, or in my head some attorneys, law firms here. And it's showing me now all the different interrogatories we have built in for the state case. This time I need a medical records that are direct questions that are admissible. So let's open that. So this tells the MRA Later on, when I do print this form or package, what type of interrogatory needs to pull. If you go to tracking, the only thing you need to do is make sure that you have 
select the default in case you do two different type of business then you might want to switch back and forth make sure you're in the right item as you save the work order now tracking has started so the first step is order received and it'll put in the date stamp and a person who started this process and it's published so now through the MR web 8 now the client can see that we have received this particular work order or location there are uh, two logs here every time the status changes it will keep track of it in the status log and the notes log is for you to make some additional notes every time there is something going on with this particular work order you will be adding notes here the notes you enter here will not be shown to clients the only thing the client will see are the tracking notes and later we'll talk about the status notes but these notes here are not public so we're done so there is a Memorial Hormone Hospital. Let's quickly add two more. So let's say new lookup. Uh, this is a Sugarland Imaging Center. So I just type sugar, enter. Well, we have that already. We've been there before. So let me enter again. And this time it is not medical records. So I'm going to switch the record type to radiology. And the, I'm going to go to forms and say interrogatory uh, state I need the radiology questions uh, x-ray open done last one new look up Walgreens the Walgreens I'm looking for is uh, 9999 Richmond and this one is on Westheimer that's not the one I need no big deal let's go ahead and add one this is a uh, Walgreens pharmacy and in 9999 Richmond Avenue since we have the built-in zip code database make sure that you just come down here and the zip code and go 77082 and then enter and then system will automatically fill in the rest of it for you there are the uh, pharmacy and the location type is also pharmacy. Uh, that's all I need at this point. Uh, if you have a phone number, you can put it in. Otherwise, save and close. So the location is Walgreen, and we also created a new entry permanently in the database, location database. Record type is a pharmacy. We go to forms. We look up a scope, and uh, that's the only scope we, I have for the pharmacy, so that's fine and then we're going to do interrogatory state and then I need a uh, Rx okay and uh, done I think I forgot to do scope for this one so let's go back to forms yep I forgot to do that look up scope any and all x-ray films blah 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 yeah that's the one I want okay so just like that we got the uh, three work orders created a week later I get another email saying we want a uh, medical records from dr. Stephen Jacobs office so you said no problem and then email only listed uh, one uh, work order or one location so this is what we were talking about in lesson one that common mistake you have a record request always go see if that patient or case already exists so I can type big or you can say records of young we already have the patient on, on big pharma case somebody entered three work orders before so you double click into any one of them and it'll show you the uh, older date oh that was a week ago gee I almost created a new case simply add a location number four and then you can say well this time we just want a medical record select and uh, we go uh, forms and we do scope this time there is no service date so we just want the uh, this one here and the interrogatory uh, will be not admissible this time it'll be inadmissible so I'll use this one and we're done 